ThreatLocker is a zero-trust endpoint protection platform, providing enterprise-level cybersecurity to organizations globally. With ThreatLocker, you only allow only what you need and block everything else, including ransomware. Learn more at ThreatLocker.com. All right, Sean. All right. Marco. Sean, here we are. I know, I'm excited. Somewhere in a room. Somewhere in a <laughs> sunny, we don't know what is outside, but uh, Melbourne, I've the been told, is the city of the four seasons in a day. Are you the wonderful wizard? It is. Uh, the one, no. Is that true? It is true. Melbourne so far, I have to say it is yeah, true. It I've is experienced true. it. Mm-hmm. Really yeah. hot. <laughs> then Muggy, <can't> <laughs> raining, cold, windy. Yeah. Well, coming from LA, it's refreshing. You there know, you it's uh, yes. not boring. No. Not boring. Went from one season to four seasons. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. When you pack for Melbourne, it's three suitcases. No, not really. It's not three. <laughs> I have well, just one carry on, which is uh, quite challenging. Yes, it would be. But, uh, for a month here. But anyway. Well. Um, we're here for a few days. We November are. For the AISA uh, Cyber Conference. A lot of great topics, a lot of great folks uh, that we're meeting, one of which is JJ. Thank you so much for taking the time in three sessions you have. I have three you're, you're sessions. You're keeping busy. Yes. <laughs> There's something like over 500 speakers at the conference this year. That's so incredible. Yeah. yeah. And amazing. a nice amount of, uh, of uh, participants, attendance. Absolutely. So I think they're looking at over 5,000. Yeah. 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 That's, that's yeah. exciting. All over, I believe. Yep. A lot yeah. of handshakes. Fist yeah. bumps. That is a lot. Yeah. Yes. A lot of selfies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll have to do one. We, we should remember to, to do, do that. that. Exactly. Yes. So, Sean, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the lead here because I'm excited. This is more in my corner here. Right. Uh, it's uh, the human <laughs> element of cybersecurity. <laughs> so, you know, it's the two of us. He he I can he can participate. With this one. I threw you, you, a bone with this one. you can participate. You can All participate. Right. Thanks for that. <laughs> so, I remember the time when I started to be in the industry because of this guy, which has been in the cybersecurity industry for I don't know before it was even cool. Wow. So that's a long time that's ago. That's a long time. Now it's really cool to be in cybersecurity. <laughs> and, uh, and we were looking at things, and uh, me coming from sociology, political science, I'm like, okay, this is great, but this is not just IT. No. And then slowly, but surely, the human element, the human element, and that's what the three session you're presenting Absolutely. are about. So yes. tell us a little bit about you and the sessions. Well, that's a big question to answer. I know. <coughs> you don't have to go that far. <laughs> I like to start from when I, I was, was hatched. born. Yes, no, <laughs> yeah. we, we won't do that. Um, so, yeah, Jacqueline and Jane, JJ. Um, my history or my career into IT and cyber was a little bit different than most. Um, I've worked and worn many hats in different industries and business units, learning about all sorts of things which helps me, I think, now to understand more that human element and how it relates to cyber and how to actually engage people correctly um, to understand what's going on. So I found myself that conduit between people and technology. So helping the everyday person understand the challenges that IT face because they are known as the Department of No, which isn't fair. Um, I've changed that to the Department of K-N-O-W because they actually do know. Um, And the human side has needs that IT don't seem to quite understand. So there's always this headbutting that occurs. And about seven years ago, I found myself in a situation to educate people on cybersecurity. I went down quite a rabbit hole and discovered that the human element or the human risk factor is huge. Um, At that time, it was around 70%. That was 2017-ish. And now we're at over 90% human Mm. error. So things aren't working as we would have hoped. And I think it's because the sophistication of cyber criminals, they've really put the foot down. And we as humans, we respond to the emotional things that cyber criminals do so well. So my focus is to look at two sides. What's happening in organisations for that human risk management perspective with security awareness training, security culture, behaviour change there, as well as the general public who have no idea about these things. Um, Basic cyber hygiene doesn't exist, so I work between both. And my three sessions here at CyberCon, there's one I have today with the wonderful Daisy Wong, who you will be finding more about this later. And we're talking about the skills required for people in organisations to run successful human risk management programs. And cyber and IT aren't on the top 10 list. 
So there's a whole lot of other skills there. And then I have a session on keeping our kids safe online, the ultimate guide for parents. Very topical. Um, our kids are experiencing all sorts of wonderful and terrible things online. And my third session is actually talking about the paradigm shift from security awareness training and phishing to that culture change and engagement. So as we move through the paradigm to where we are now for human risk management. So All right. a bit about me and what I'm doing here at CyberCon. That's great. Can I ask the first question? Oh, yeah, go for I'm it. I'm gonna jump right in. Um, one of the reasons we like to be here is because of the regional, yes, national differences in culture. You mentioned the word culture, which yeah. it can be in family culture or business culture, but there's a international culture and differences between regions. How much, and I ask this question first because it probably set the stage for everything else you talk about. How much of the global view do you have in terms of kids and online safety, businesses and human risk management, and how culture changes? Are you primarily focused in Australia and APJ, or do you get a, a view broader? Good question. Um, it is a global view. There is nothing different. Yeah. Um, there are nuances, absolutely, within organisations and some countries that might be more compliance-based and more willing to do what they're requested to do. Um, but what I find is the human error, the human element in organisations globally is the same. It's not that there's one country or one area who are doing it better than others. Right. Um, and from the individual point of view with the kids online, even the, the social media bans that are being talked about at the moment here in Australia, it's global. The same conversations happening in the UK and America and other parts of the world. So the issues are the same. They might have slight differences depending on where you are. Um, and the added complexity is it's global, we're connected, hyper-connectivity. So there's no boundaries, there's no laws that we can put surrounding certain things because I can talk to anyone at any time, anywhere. Right. Yeah, yeah. good question. And that's you know something that I, I like to look at because uh, you know, we still have a prehistoric brain. We react when you look at social engineering. Yes, is that sense of urgence, like panicking? I mean, I still get excited about the Spanish prisoner letter, <laughs> right? When I get a letter like that, so the Nigerian, the Nigerian <laughs> oh, the Nigerian I have to walk them off. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, the point is that yeah, it, we, we we're still there. We're still playing with emotion, just at a much larger scale. We are right, so that that letter is not hundred letters, it's thousands and millions, and now we got AI and all of that. So yes. technology is not the excuse anymore. No. I mean, we, we need to think human. We do. Yeah. Um, interesting story, quick story. There's a tax scam that goes around every year here in Australia. So the Australian Tax Office is our governing body here, and a scam comes out every year on the phone. Recorded message, Australian accent, so it sounds absolutely perfect telling the person that they've done the wrong thing with their taxes and they're going to be arrested, like there's financial issues. Panic. And press one to talk to someone. Mm. Now, a couple of years ago, I was actually writing an article and going through the transcription of this scam. And I got a phone call and it was the scam. <laughs> did, did so my brain, <laughs> my brain knows 100% this is a scam. Yep. But the language used, my body had a visceral reaction mm. to that fear. And I sat there thinking, my goodness, this is not about understanding things. Yeah. This is so much deeper than that. My body was it's innate. Oh, I'm, I'm going to be arrested. I my brain was like, this is a scam. Even yeah. you describing it, I feel a little bit. <laughs> Seriously, it, I'm it's, not joking. It's the yeah. natural responses yeah. we have as humans, and that's why human error is where it's at. Because cyber yeah. criminals use that. No, yeah. it was yeah. really interesting. So is it a cultural change that we need to? I mean, do we need to mature into living with technology because we're maybe it happened a little too quick? I think I use analogies a lot. And one analogy I use is road safety. Hmm. When we're little, we are taught road safety based on our experience of the road. So we might be on our little bicycles or the, the bikes with no wheels. Hmm. And then we're taught that road safety as we grow up older, holding hands, crossing the road. We're taught that it becomes hmm part of what we do, it's sort of a part of our DNA of road safety. And then when we get our license, it's another element we need to learn. And there's always learning and responsibility and everyone's involved. With cyber security and technology as it is, that hasn't happened. It's been really fast. 
And I think we're two generations away from kids coming into the world with parents or carers who can give them that, okay, so we're not giving you a smartphone at a young age, we're giving you a dumb phone, so dumb it's smart, that just does calls and text messages for communication. But at school, we hope you can learn how to be a good digital citizen. Right. And we don't have that at the moment. So kids are having issues online and so are adults. Same problems. Yeah. It's an awareness education. It needs to be in schools, age appropriate, usage for devices, all through university. This is not something you just learn. And it takes... It takes a while. It then does. you get to the car, but you start with your rollerblades exactly. and your bike, <laughs> and you know. And now you're just like, hey, here, travel the world, take a car, See all go. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I have an 18 year old son, and I did not give him the keys at 16 to the car and say, off you go, drive mm -hmm. safe. Mm -hmm. Exactly. He had to study for his learners. Yeah. He had oh. to go through the whole process, and you know that first time driving. I don't know if you can remember that. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> and he's I'm never going to get this. And you eventually do. And they do. But you still have to look after your car. You still have to think about what you're doing. Pay attention. Mm -hmm. So well, Let's talk about that a little bit. Think, thinking. Because it, when you just described kind of the... Yeah. You, you get the feeling. Oftentimes you don't think. And, and I was doing some trick-or-treating and, and crossing the street with the kids. It was easy to just cross and not think... And I paused for a moment and said, let's look both ways. Correct. Mm -hmm. And it'd be easy to take it for granted that, I don't know why the, the child would know, but to look both ways because yeah. that's obvious. But I'm just wondering, so do we, are we finding ourselves in a place where we take things for granted, where we think kids will know because they should know, because it makes sense, common sense, and I don't know, just that whole <laughs> yeah, process. It's what I find is people in the industry, people in IT, technology, cyber, in that space, there's an, an assumed knowledge that comes with that. And that is not everybody else's assumed knowledge. It just isn't. Um, mm -hmm. People don't understand that Microsoft will never call you at home. That should be a given that everyone in this world knows. Or your knows. bank. Or your bank. So if you get an incoming bit of communication asking you for personal identifiable information, paying a bill, threatening you with something, that should be a thank you for the call, goodbye. Mm -hmm. It isn't. It's not a habit yet. So I think there's a misconception of what people, general population outside of our world, know about technology and IT. Um, most of them don't know how to use a printer. Mm. And I say that with respect. If you are not in it all the time, I mean, I read the manual that comes with every device. <laughs> I'm that one person. When you get the manual. Yeah. Because now I, stuff get without But I go manual. online, download <laughs> yeah, the PDF. That's right. And that's sometimes well. I'll print it out. Well, you're definitely a hacking kind of person. It's just. <laughs> however, people know that. So they'll ring me and say, hey, how do I do this? Right. Yeah. And one thing I say to people for computers is read the screen. It's all just look. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that curiosity and that element isn't there. Technology yeah. and online experience is so unique and these devices give us access to so, so much and our kids inadvertently find things. Mm. Um, they, they're shown things. It's so easy to pick up and just show you something that you're not prepared for. Yeah. How do you control that? Mm. Yep. It's an awareness, it's a, how do we get good kids to become good digital citizens and understand that digital footprint, um, sharing information, it's there forever. They don't care until they're in their 30s or think, well, maybe they shouldn't have done this. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> there's no evidence of our time online. That's, you know. I, I want to go to, you said, read what's on the screen. Yeah. So you mentioned I've been in this space for a long time. When I was building products at, at Symantec, we actually did a bunch of focus groups for user-centered design and, and looking at how people, consumers, interacted with antivirus software. Do you alert them? Do you hide the alert? And so I use that as an example often to say the, the ultimate goal was to inform that them in, that they were protected yes. but not overwhelm them with information so that they have to worry about that. They can get to what they're most in, yeah, most interested in working on on the computer. I think to some degree that's a disservice. And if we look at just like the smartphone or computers or even cars, a lot of stuff is happening behind the scenes. We have no idea how or why it does it. 
is it doing it for us or against yes. us? Are we doing it in a way that uh, it impacts us from a privacy perspective or safety perspective? So there's so much hidden, not a lot is on the screen or displayed to us anymore. How do we kind of wrangle with that to educate and bring knowledge to be so we're informed so we can make wise decisions versus doing everything for us? And it's a $64 million right? question. Although, <laughs> here's, you remember the day of Clippy? Clippy oh would yeah. pop up. Do you need mm. help? Um, Clippy. Clippy. Still around. Yeah. <laughs> Made a big, like, at the resurgence yeah, of the AI right now. Right. It's hilarious. I'm a Mac guy, so I don't, okay. I don't see a clip. I'm, doing, <laughs> I'm on the Mac now too, and I really do enjoy it. It's, we think about the nudge theory of mm -hmm. letting people know, like, mm -hmm. there's a bin around the corner, don't drop your rubbish, for example. So it's like, oh, okay. However, we know not to litter. We know mm -hmm. those things. The complexity we have with online safety, and let's think about cybersecurity and emails, which is a big problem. So how does you open that email? How do you know what to do? At the moment, the nudge theory, the nudge of, hey, should you click that? Do you really want to do that? That's one element to look at, whilst at the same time educating people to spot those red flags. We're not at a point where we are with antivirus now. People know they have to have it. Like for me, I have it and I know what it does and I get prompted, databases are out of date. So mm -hmm. that to me, that's the most important thing I need to make sure that the databases are up to date. So I will stop what I'm doing and update because I know that's important. Many people think antivirus will help you with phishing emails too. They don't understand it's only the known stuff and the updates is the new stuff that's come in. So it's once people know, they can accept what they have to do. For the cyber for phishing, we're so far away from that. Mm. We have to come at it from an education point of view, from a simulated phishing campaigns perspective to help people understand what they're seeing. Um, give people like example after example to say, is this real or is this potential phishing in a safe environment? Because you can't learn piano without playing it. Mm -hmm. I can read music, but if I'm not actually on the piano, I can't play. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Technically, you can play concert level. <laughs> and that's the, the frustration mm. within the industry. That's what I'm seeing. The perception that we just educate people and say, don't click on suspicious links. Mm. But people don't know what a suspicious link is. Right. And there's the problem. Yeah. So you say, just hover over the link. Uh, do you know how many people <laughs> will say to me, what does hover over a link mean? <laughs> and you think, oh, really? But that's yeah, the assumed. Links this long. Or it's been shortened. Right. Well, you know, it, it's like you, you bring the example of music. It's like, you know, yeah, just play this chord. And somebody's yeah. going to be like, huh? <laughs> that's what, what C. do you mean? That's right? the C and chord. Play. Yeah. <laughs> but if, you, if you're if you not a musician, if you're not the, the, the technology expert, the cybersecurity is not coming like that. Correct. You need to go right? back to basics. And sometimes you need to make mistakes in order to exactly. to learn. But we don't even allow people to make mistake and let you run a, si a simulation because it's too risky. Exactly. I mean, you're getting fished, yes. right? So, but I, I know a C chord on the <coughs> trumpet. I know a C chord on the piano. I'm learning the C chord on the guitar yeah. and playing certain. But you need on to practice to actually do it, very right? Different. And when you first yeah. start, um, I mean, my son plays piano and he's yeah. just sort of learning and transitioning into guitar. And he's, um, Tears from Heaven is something he's playing at the mm -hmm. moment, that beginning part where Eric it's Clapton. really, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the first few days, because he's, he's quite talented at playing music, the first few days it was all over the place and he was getting really frustrated. <laughs> After a week, mm. that first was just like, yeah. but it wasn't like that in the exactly. beginning. He's got the rest of the song to learn, for yeah. goodness sake, you know? Yeah. It's, and in, I think for technology, one thing I say, Two things, three things, a lot of things I say. <laughs> Humans aren't born secure and right. we cannot be patched. Right. And that's the approach from IT in general. Yeah. We'll just patch them. So, no. We'll just throw more technology. Mm. No. It's the big problem that we have. So it's breaking it down to educate people to be suspicious and cautious mm. all the time. So if you don't expect something in, don't interact with it until you've had a second or third checking point. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, yeah, what you said at the beginning, it's kind of like the, the teaching kids how to behave in the street, on the road. 
Yes. Right? You get to a point that when you get to the street, you look left and right. Even if it's a one-way street, you're Correct. still going to do it left it's and habit. right because it's, it's, it's a mus mus muscle memory. And it's different when you come to the other side of the country. You have to switch that around. Yep. Mm. Because oh, the yeah. cars are coming oh, in. Oh, I've been honking the UK many times. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But, but, but this, we're going somewhere, I think. And, and I'd like to, to look at a little bit into the future, maybe, as we start wrapping here. Because when you, when you get the alert for from the malware and say, hey, we need to do an update, or you get like the phone is like, yeah, security update, yes. jump on it, do it. I can see how AI that it could help contextualize in an email could become that pop-up and say, hmm, this email yes. starting to get suspicious to me. Think about it. I'm not saying it is, just make your decision, exactly. but th there is an alert. Absolutely. So do, do we look again, at, we go back into technology as the easy button maybe? <laughs> it's certainly, well when AI, AI's been around, like I said with Clippy, with Grammarly, AI's been around for years. Yeah. QR codes have been around for years, but they just went poof mm. over the uh, pandemic. Now, when we think about um, AI, as much as we are using it for good, cyber criminals are, are using it for their nefarious activities as no. well. So when they do things, we do things to try and combat it. The under, or the overarching or underlying, whichever way you want to look at it, us as humans, we just need an extra la layer of being more aware than ever with the deep fake calls that are happening now to oh take yeah. someone's voice and ring grandma or auntie and say look you know grandma i'm in jail I, my lawyer needs five thousand dollars he'll ring you and it sounds exactly like no. that person people need a code word now within their families yeah. so it it's the only way to combat it is to say well what's the code word do you want it i'll tell you <laughs> you can, don't, don't tell me the code word. <laughs> when that's the difference. But the hardest part is, back to my story before mm. about f f having that visceral yeah. feeling, yeah. even if you don't get the code word, it's your grandson or granddaughter mm. you're talking to. Yep. And you have to hang up. Mm. Yep. Um, and, but then you have to make calls straight away to mm. what's going on. So it's when new things occur, we have to always find ways to combat it. Um, and the difference with cyber is it's something new every day. That's the complexity. Yep. Think about um, work health safety. There's not many new spills that happen that you need to right. clean up or like, it's a, it's a compliance based reminder. Yep. Cyber is all the time. Yep. So it's uh, something we need to like road safety, sun safety, stop, drop and roll with, with uh, wind fires. Yep. It's got to be here for people to think, hold on, I shouldn't click, I shouldn't engage, I should hang up, yep. pay attention. It's really challenging for yep. all of us. Yeah. I want to take you a, a minute for your opinion. We talked a little bit about this before we started. About yeah. I, I heard about this law mm. that they're working on in Australia in terms of like limiting social media to under 16 years yes. old. Your opinion. My opinion. I know you have opinions. I have an opinion. <laughs> um, there's, it's twofold. It's an inc firstly incredibly complex. Um, a, an issue where there are two sides to this, both of which are right. If we think about parents and families who have unfortunately experienced probably the greatest losses of their lives with their children deciding to end their lives mm -hmm. as a result of bullying. Uh, that is, you can't argue with that, that something needs to be done in social media to protect our children and do more <coughs> in that space. So there's 100% um, support for the ban on that group, which I respect 100%. The other side of it is our children and our, or our teenagers, our kids are using social media to connect with their whole world. Mm. Yep. It is everything they do. They don't even text, they message. Um, and we've allowed this to happen as a society. It's not a parent's fault, it's a society issue um, where any kid can open an account three or four on any social media platform and no one mm. can stop them. They can say they're 18 or not because we will find a way around whatever we want to do. Banning something is not the answer. It is certainly a topic that must be discussed, but again, I come back to education and awareness, yep. teaching kids at school. So we can't fence the ocean, you know, the horses bolted, the gates open, all of the things you could imagine. But we still need to look after the kids who are using social media now and the children who are coming up to that age group where, you know, usually it's 13, that's the, 
the age, the platform say you can join. Um, but in my opinion, the kids should not have smartphones until they're 13. There is no need for it. But we, if we change that tomorrow and gave every took, took away smartphones from every child under 13, it would be really, really challenging on so many levels. It would cause problems. Um, and there's proven evidence that most kids access mental health information online via social media. So if you're struggling as a kid, no one to talk to, you'll use social media to find all of that. Um, so rather than try and ban, because if it's successful, kids will still find a way around. Absolutely. You can, go, can you buy me a phone? Can you mm. buy me a phone? Yeah, it's, it's like buying a drink. Yeah. It's buying a drink, buying cigarettes, you know, yeah. vapes are banned here. Mm. It's still vaping. It's very complex. Um, actually, a, a dear friend of mine said it's a wicked problem because it is so complex. It covers so many different areas. It's intricate. There's no right or wrong. Um, the conversation is now heated up to a point of debate and it's polarizing. Teenagers themselves aren't being heard um, and professionals on both sides of that area um, aren't getting that equal share um, of the the sound bites, I suppose, is the, the term to call but, it. But you so. know, it, uh, sorry, I'm going to let you then finish, but the, it goes back to the, the training on the road. Correct. If you say you can't do anything in the road, you can't even go on a bike, you can learn slowly, yes. and then at 16 you give the keys, like, okay, 16, here's your social media. Yes, mm -hmm. but, but you're not What are you going to do with it? You're exactly. not even trained at that point slowly. So maybe there is a, there is a, a progression. Absolute, that, absolutely. Yeah. But you don't give the keys to a 10-year-old yeah. to drive the car. Yeah. Exactly. Why not? Well, they're not going to fit on the seat. <laughs> They can't reach the pedals. It's the. I yeah. drove on a farm when I was ten. I was just about to say, <laughs> unless you have a farm. But, but that yeah. helps you to learn. Exactly. You know? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So we were going to say this. I was going to say the same exact thing. And I think, um, I guess the point is that if they're too young, I think there's still some learning that needs to take place. Absolutely. But guided, there has to be some guidance. Yeah. Yes. Guidance. Parents or school or government or some other agency or it's everyone's or responsibility yeah i mean there there are groups that do sports to bring kids and they're learning life skills while they're playing sports at the y Correct. right that kind of stuff um which then may switch into in a digital world that means people viewing into what's going on which we then open up the whole can of worms of privacy and correct then the whole cultural thing comes back at the beginning yes <laughs> yes might work well in singapore china maybe not so much in exactly. the states for example um fascinating conversation it's lovely been great. to meet you likewise and, thank uh, you Thank I you. wish you the best with all your, your sessions. Yes, hopefully I'll be people. tired on Thursday. I know. <laughs> well, hopefully you have many more chats with, with people. I'm not yes. sure if they'll, they'll all ra rush the stage <laughs> to, uh, to get your sticker. Yeah. Oh, yes. The yeah. very, very exclusive <laughs> sticker. Yep. Yeah, I, I will use that. And uh, we should stay in touch. Absolutely. Because this, is, this yeah. is, again, a global it is. problem. We're not going to resolve it at an individual level. No. And we can hope it all help each other, like achieving something yeah. um, together. And that's why we travel when we can and meet. I try uh, to ditch them all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's not working, clearly. So no, me. I found my way. <laughs> <laughs> Even the day after, but I got here. <laughs> you did end up the day after. Well, thank you so much, JJ. Thank you. JJ, JJ really JJ, appreciate it. Thank you. Everybody else, stay tuned out there. We got so many conversations. She got three sessions. We got, I don't know, 15 of these podcasts. the sessions, more. say hello. Absolutely. And yep. uh, find us, and we have stickers too. So we'll <laughs> see you soon. Thanks Take care, everybody. Bye. Thank you, JJ. Thank you. Threat Locker is a zero trust endpoint protection platform providing enterprise-level cybersecurity to organizations globally. With ThreatLocker, you only allow only what you need and block everything else, including ransomware. Learn more at ThreatLocker.com.